Yeah, I've been in the parking and mobility industry since early 2017. I started my career um, in this industry over at ParkWiz, which is now Arrive, which is now part of Flash. Um, and I, uh, I'm now part of Park Mall. I've been here for the last three or so years, um, serving as a uh, regional manager. Um, I've been on the board for the last two years of NISPA, and when I came in uh, to parking, uh, this association was very welcoming. Um, Jason especially, it was coming in as a, a young uh, guy who didn't really know anybody in the parking world. I felt very at home in this uh, association, so I thank all of you for that. Um, and I am sad to be leaving the board, uh, but it is, you know, it's nice to be passing it on to some other great folks. Um, and some things that I love to do, I love the Jets, unfortunately, it's a li lifelong fan. Uh, maybe one year we'll get, we'll get a W. Um, and I love to snowboard and, and golf. Golfing is a, a hobby of mine that I really enjoy, and especially during COVID times, was able to get out on the links a uh, number of times. So the trend toward contactless payments. Uh, as we all began to recover from the pandemic, uh, businesses have certainly changed. Uh, it's often said that never let a pandemic go to waste. Um, and we certainly see that play out today. Consumer trends towards wanting to interact with contactless, touch-free, and tap-and-go technology has never been more prevalent. You can go to just about any store, restaurant, um, or any other place of business, and there's most likely a contactless payment option at your disposal. The U.S. has historically been slow to adopt new technology trends, but the pandemic has sparked rapid growth in contactless payment methods are now the preference, not just simply an option. Uh, show of hands, how many of you prefer using a contactless payment option to the standard? Okay, most people. I, I am like that as well. I have an Apple Watch. Um, I use my Apple Watch to pay for just about everything that I can because it's a whole heck of a lot easier. So Visa ran a study recently about global small business insights. Uh, they titled it Power and Recovery Through Digital and Contactless Payments Amidst COVID-19. And through this study, they found that 78% of global consumers have adjusted the way they pay for items in the wake of intensified safety concerns. 63% of consumers would switch to a new business that installed contactless payment options. And nearly half, or 48%, would not shop at a store that only offers payment methods that require contact with a cashier or shared machine like a card reader. And Suzanne Career from uh, Visa, who's actually no longer at Visa and, was, and is with uh, Fiverr now, um, consumer had said consumers are putting COVID-19 safety measures at the top of their shopping list and rewarding businesses that do the same. And you might be thinking, well, these are small business owners, what, you know, what they're seeing in their um, insights. So how does this really apply to parking? Well, these small business shoppers are the same ones that park in your garage or lot. They're the ones that live, work, park, and transact in your city. And the data is overwhelming that the shift towards contactless payment methods is here. So the demand for contactless option, uh, payment options has never been higher. In May of 2020, we surveyed a group of 2,000 Park Mobile users and asked them two questions. One, how often did you use contactless payment options in 2019? And then two, how often do you expect to use it in the next one to two years? And 40% of users plan to increase their use of contactless payment options. That's a 10x the amount that said they will decrease their use. Isn't it just millennials that are familiar with apps and contactless payment options is something that I hear? The answer would be wrong. The largest growth in both contactless preference and adoption occurred among baby boomers. Um, preference jumped from 45% uh, pre-COVID to 55% today. Adoption of a contactless card or app increased six, from 67% to 71. This is followed by Gen Z, Gen X, and then millennials. Um, so this is, you know, this is again, going back to the point that it's not just millennials that want contactless options, it's just about everyone. And people are searching for contactless payments. You know, this screenshot shows volumes for the term contactless payments using Google Trends, which by the way is a great resource, it's free. You can search just about anything to see what people are looking for online. Um, and this increase in, the increase in searches about contactless payments, it's an all time high as the pandemic began and people are continuing to search for contactless payments while in their cars. Um, everyone wants to take their car, it's a you know, mode of preference, they're more comfortable, they're working hybrid uh, models from uh, work. So it makes sense that more people would be searching and using parking apps rather than a transit app. Um, and with more drivers on the road choosing to take their personal vehicles, um, you know, parking app usage is at an all time high. You know, but there are challenges. Um, and the last couple of slides showcase how big of a demand there really is for contactless payments uh, and parking apps, but there are, you know, these, there's still challenges to take into consideration um, when offering these types of solutions at your operations. Consumers are smart and they don't just want another app on their phone. 
So how can parking suppliers, cities, municipalities, operators address these changing uh, consumer behaviors? So, you know, we want to look at the people without smartphones, those who don't want to download an app, people without credit cards, foreign visitors unable to download apps in the U.S. So, you know, at Park Mobile, we have a couple of par uh, example parking personas and, you know, th these are just the tool that allow us to better understand parkers and simplify them based on what they're like so we can address their needs. Risky Randy is somebody like me. Um, I don't do a ton of planning when, when I go somewhere. You know, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I just, where, wherever I spot or a space or I'll figure it out. Um, planning Paula is someone who plans well before their trip. Um, before they leave the house, she likes to know exactly where she's parking and how much she's going to pay. Savvy Sam is someone who understands how to use parking apps and contactless payment options. If he has to interact with a new app or new payment method, he's able to quickly uh, adapt to do so. But, but the person that I want to focus on is Novice Nancy. Novice Nancy is less tech savvy, doesn't pay for parking very often, doesn't want to have to download a new app. She doesn't want to create a new account. She just wants it to be quick and easy. Historically, the parker, you know, the parker has had you know, two choices, pay at the meter or pay with an app. For somebody who is not familiar with apps and not tech savvy, they're probably going to use the meter because it's much more familiar to them and they know how to use it. You know, so an observation, you know, how, how can we meet drivers' uh, needs better? You know, the industry is waiting for consumers to come to us rather than meeting consumers where they are. You know, consumers want more options. You know, another survey we ran um, in March of this year asking how important is it to have a variety of options to pay for parking? And the majority, 62% said it's important to have multiple options, uh, which is overwhelming. So to increase contactless adoption, it's all about providing more consumer choice. So what's the best way to provide consumer choice? Multiple app environments. This is a trend. Um, I think, you know, we as uh, Park Mobile, you know, Passport, Pay by Phone, these are all things that we've been talking about for the last several years. Um, you know, and, and it's starting to come to fruition. There's many cities, universities, parking operators, you know, in this room that, that adopt, you know, multiple, um, multiple app providers. You know, and, and talking about the landscape for a second, you know, there are a plethora of, mo of mobile app providers, right? You know, many of us are here today. Um, you know, so there's no shortage of, of what, apps, what apps are out there. Um, but it's really, you know, what app is, the best, is best suited for your operation? The city felt that it was a good time to introduce contactless payments in the city. They had a couple of goals when launching contactless options. Um, in the wake of COVID, they wanted to provide uh, a safe and alternate payment method to using the meters. Additionally, they had been having issues with their meters for the last couple of years. They often had to replace several of them every couple of years, and between the service and maintenance costs, the city realized they were paying a lot of money for their equipment. Uh, and understanding that with the introduction of Park Mobile, they'd be able to offer an app. Um, they would be able to offer an app, but also several other contactless payment options, um, like uh, QR codes, text to pay, a 1-800 IVR number, guest checkout. Um, they felt this was a good time to reduce the, their hardware footprint and remove over half of their pay stations from operation. Um, the city reduced their footprint from 40 plus pay stations to 18. Um, and they knew that they would need to rely heavily on contactless payment options to collect the lion's share of parking fees from users. Um, but they were confident um, in talking with other Jersey Shore municipalities, being you know, mostly seasonal parking operation, um, that they would be able to achieve these adoption rates um, and rely on Park Mobile as um, you know, the, the main source of, of revenue. So let's, lo let's look at the numbers. Uh, in the first month that we had launched, which was May of, uh, May of this year, uh, we had a 66% adoption rate, which is about two-thirds of, of parking revenue. Um, and, and that is just incredible, uh, being in that it was the first month that we launched historically. If, if we launch in an environment where there are pay stations available, um, you know, you, we, we see anywhere from 20 to 30%. So 66% is just absolutely blowing it out of the water. And you can see by the end of, Ju by the end of July, as people became more familiar with it, we had three-fourths adoption, um, which is you know, some of the highest adoptions we, we've seen in the country for a deployment. Um, and, and this is, just goes to show that you know, the city was confident in, in the selection that they made, uh, but also you understood consumers' trends towards wanting multiple different options to pay for parking. It wasn't just about having the app. They wanted people to be able to use the guest checkout feature if they were just coming for a long weekend, coming from you know, a suburb, suburb in New Jersey. Um, and with our solution and, and many of the solutions out there, um, they're able to achieve that. So thinking outside the, uh, the app, and this brings me to my next point. Um, you know, we need to continue to listen to what consumers want. 
Um, if we take a look at a survey we ran earlier this year, you know, and I was looking for the signs as to, you know, where the zone number was or QR code, and I couldn't find a sign. You know, there was a little sticker on the top back of the pay station. Um, and I said, this is too hard for me to, to use. It, it needs to be made easier. So I went to the pay station, I inserted my credit card, and I was on my way. Signage is a really important piece, and promoting the different ways to pay for parking goes along with that. If people don't know, you know, we assume that people know how to use the app and, and all the different ways, but the reality is that they don't. So we need to put that on signage to make them aware, make it easy for them to interact. Um, you know, we also have to create equ equitable access for patrons without smartphones, credit cards, and debit cards. You know, there are still people out there who don't have a smartphone. Um, so there needs to be an option for them, too, to pay using our solution. Obviously, if they don't have a smartphone, they're not going to be able to download an app. Uh, but they can still call into a 1-800-IVR system. Um, for the unbanked, um, someone uh, that doesn't have a credit card or uh, a debit card, they can use a PayPal account. They can use a prepaid card or relo uh, reloadable uh, prepaid card from like a retailer like Green Dot mm -hmm. or NetSpend. So there are other options out there that allow for someone who doesn't have a smartphone to use and interact you know, with our solution and a lot of the other mobile payment options out there. But we still want to give consumers more, we, but we still want to give uh, more options to meet consumers where they are. So, you know, we looked at this graph before, but let's take this a step further and ask ourselves the question, well, what other types of payments are people searching for? And the answer is Google Pay. Uh, consumers are searching Google Pay through the roof. If users are searching for it, then there's real interest in being able to utilize this type of payment method, and the parking industry should be no different, and that we need to figure out a way to offer this to them. So Google partnered with Park Mobile and also Passport, um, and there's other mobile pay providers that they're working with as well, um, to allow people to use Google Pay's native app to pay for parking. Um, if you search in the store, in the app store, you'll see that Park Mobile is number three in the navigation category, uh, only behind Google Maps and Waze. And this tells us that people are downloading these apps, and this is where they want to be transacting. And now users can use Google Pay to pay for parking. I'm not sure if anyone's actually you know, in this room has used it, but it is, is, it is a neat feature. I'd recommend go checking it out because it allows you to not even have to have the app on your phone, but use a Google Pay account to pay for your parking needs. Um, and again, you know, we as an industry need to meet the consumers where they are instead of waiting for them to come to us. Making the app stickier. So it, it, the user experience is something that often gets overlooked. Um, and while par parking suppliers don't necessarily have a say in how an application is built or the features that are offered, it's good for them to understand kind of what the thinking is behind you know, our companies in, in creating and offering these apps to uh, consumers. You know, co you know, companies often assume that the user's already bought their product or wants to sign up for weekly updates. And nowadays, that's not always the case. This product design mistake immediately cuts away at potential customers who are just there to test and explore the app before transacting with the product. The best way to learn is by doing an app. The app will prompt them, the app will prompt them to scan it in the app. Um, and then once they scan it, it actually starts the session in Park Mobile. And then as they're, en as they're exiting the facility, they'll, uh, um, they'll enter that, uh, or should I say, once they exit the facility, they'll put the ticket back into the machine. And once that machine reads the ticket, it's, it communicates with Park Mobile and says, this driver stayed here for four hours, charged them X number of dollars. So it's just another way to help with uh, egress issues and also offer you know, another way to pay for parking without having, to, uh, without having to interact with a pay station. So what are some key takeaways? Uh, the demand for contactless payment options is at an all-time high. The key for parking providers to drive higher contactless adoption is to make sure you're offering more choice to your consumers. Uh, providing more choice means meeting customers where they are. Um, and expanding ways people can use the app for mobility services will help drive higher adoption over time. And that's all I've got for you today. So, thank you. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll open it up to any you know, questions or topics of discussions. I know we've got a little bit of time here. Um, yeah, feel free to jump in. You can see why we have Lex on the board. He's full of energy. <laughs> um, it went very quick. So if anybody doesn't have any questions, we're thinking about just jumping into the next presentation. If everybody's OK with that, really no sense to sit around till 10 o'clock and wait. So if everybody's OK with that, uh, and if nobody has any questions for Lex, we'll just jump right in. And uh, oh. we'll never care. Please. Yeah. Well, I have a question. When you talked at the end about um, integrating with some of the equipment, the gates, 
what type of equipment is that? Specifically? So today, you know, for Park Mobile, we're able to integrate with providers like Flash, T-Bus, Gadata, uh, Data Park, um, and we're working on a couple of other integrations with, with Parks providers. So it's, you know, this is something newer that we're, that we're able to offer, but uh, it's something that we're seeing demands for, so we're going to continue to work on those integrations with, with all of the other providers out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it goes both ways, right? It's not, you know, we have to do work on our side, but the parks providers also has to do work on their side. And many times there's challenges in reading the, the barcodes, um, you know, the software that's being used, if it's older equipment. So, but yes, theoretically, if there's a barcode, it should be able to be uh, integrated to our system. Yeah, Sean. Mm -hmm. they, they have a lot of empty storefronts. What, um, what mechanisms does, does uh, you have to try to maybe bring uh, motorists into the store? Is it, is it like, uh, like a merchant credit program? Yeah, we have a validation program, um, which essentially enables merchants to offer discounted or free parking to drivers who are, you know, they want to come into their place, you know, businesses. Um, it's something that we're seeing a lot of cities and municipalities tend to use, especially in the wake of COVID, as some of those smaller villages and towns you know, t um, are slower to recover. Um, and a lot of those vacancies are, are still consistent. You know, a lot of that hasn't changed. So it's something that we offer um, through our validation program. Yeah. Uh, do you see the experience happening where a lot of municipalities have created a platform for trying to process along with commercial operators and, and trying to get... Well, we spoke about the show, and yeah. that's how we started with that. We thought, because we were coming out of Europe, where they were using texting, and I remember a guppy sitting in Albany, and they said, you're out of your effing mind if you think people are gonna text. And I said, well, if you have a 15 or 16 year old, you're gonna learn how to text really fast, because they don't answer the phone. But we had, we've had to spend the next six months going and building the, the IVR, because that's what the US demanded of us. Right. And then let's make a point about Models, right? That, yeah. That's all technology. I know. Uh, given the trends of today, it, there was mass adoption. Yeah. So to bring that back. I know. I, we we launched it in Montgomery County about I don't know eight years ago, and everyone was like, "You're using QR codes? Like this is ancient stuff." Mm -hmm. And it's just so funny now, given COVID, where we're yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really had the QR codes have really had a resurgence. Um, I mean. For whatever reason, there's a lot of reasons for it, uh, but we're you know placing that as one of the more important things on our signage. I mean, in the IVR system, you know, we see less than one percent of all transactions are made through that IVR system. So many a times, it is a requirement for suppliers to be able to offer that because at the end of the day, there's always going to be that use case where someone doesn't have a smartphone um, or someone doesn't want to download an app. So you have to have it as a backup, but it's not heavily utilized. Correct. Now you can do it just from your camera on your phone. Correct, yes. The iPhone and, and Androids have made you know, leaps and bounds of updates to where you really don't even need the app to use the QR code. You can just do it directly from the camera and it'll link you out. The times are, the times are changing. And, and you know, the innovation, I, I don't think, just stops here. I think we continue to move forward with you know, new ways to pay for parking and synergies between all of the different companies out there. So it's exciting times. All right, well, thank you everybody.